Today, let's work on some concepts for jazz improvisation based on the following Herbie Hancock line. And definitely be sure to stick around until the end of the video, where I'll show you how to download the PDF for today's lesson. So I'm gonna give you a 10 step exercise to practice so that you can get these kinds of shapes under your fingers. And by the way, you can practice this shape on any instrument. In step one, we're gonna practice this line that works on a two five. So this is a simple arpeggio over the two chord and then a descending line on the five chord. And notice that the five chord is a seven flat nine chord. And we're resolving to the flat three of the target. Step two, let's practice the same lick, but this time over consecutive two fives. Remember, you're gonna find consecutive two fives like this all the time in jazz standards. So it's a great step to practice to keep your lines flowing when you're improvising. Step three, another great concept to practice is the enclosure that traps a note like this. We're trapping our target note with two diatonic notes, the one below and the one above. For example, if we wanna trap the flat three of a Dorian minor seven chord, we use the second degree and the fourth degree from Dorian. And if we wanna trap the third of a Mixolydian dominant chord, we're gonna use the second and the fourth degrees from Mixolydian. So on a B flat seven, we trap the D with C and E flat like this. And if we use this concept over a two five, we'll get this. In step four, let's do a simple variation of step three. Instead of thinking of a two five, we're gonna think of minor seven chords with the exact same root movement by perfect fifths. Now we're trapping the flat three for both chords. What's interesting about this variation is that a flat three is also a sharp nine. So whether these chords are minor sevens of dominant chords, it's irrelevant because the flat three could be reinterpreted as a sharp nine. So on an F minor seven to B flat minor seven, we would play this. But on an F minor seven to B flat seven, we could play the exact same thing. Now, the D flat is acting as the sharp nine of the B flat seven. But for this step, we're just gonna think of minor seven chords. In step five, we're playing this. This is a great enclosure that could be seen from a bunch of different perspectives. You can see it as a line that descends from A flat to D like this. And if we play this line on an F minor seven to B flat seven, it takes us from the third of the F minor seven to the third of the B flat seven. I like to think of a C minor chord that starts shrinking towards the center like this. This sits very comfortably on the hand and it's a simple approach. When we play the notes in order, it goes like this. Practice playing this shape at different tempos until it becomes easy. Now this shape could be applied to so many different chord progressions. For example, I can play something like this. Here, the shape could fit a D minor seven flat five to G seven flat nine like this. I mean, we could do an entire lesson on this shape alone, but the whole point is that you start feeling this shape in your fingers. Step six, here's another useful shape which could work on a five seven to a major target or a simple major seven or major six chord. It's a simple descending line with a twist at the end and it's ubiquitous in jazz. This is another compound line as the one in the previous step was. I want you to think of this line as two lines. A descending line like this, and another descending line of only two notes like this. In the final line, the C note interrupts the initial descending line, adding this leap. 
Then the original line continues and then finishes with a resolution of the leap, C to a B flat, like this. This shape is great because it completes the entire measure. In a way, it works like the bebop line in which we add a passing tone to a mixolydian scale to make all the chord tones land on downbeats, also completing an entire four beat measure. Step seven, double trapping a note is an essential shape to add to your playing. Here, we're double trapping the E flat with D and F and then D and E. This is very useful to trap target notes in which the following diatonic tone is a whole step above it. And the previous diatonic note is a half step below it. For example, let's say we're in C mixolydian. Let's consider the B flat as our target note. The note above B flat in C mixo is C, a whole step above. And the note below B flat in C mixo is an A, a half step below. So now we can trap B flat like this. And we can do that because we have two pitches available above the B flat, C and B natural. Step eight. As you can see, we're just adding two ways of creating a leap after double trapping a note with the enclosure from our last step. Practicing leaps like this after any enclosure or shape that you practice is very helpful because it teaches your fingers different options that you can use to follow an enclosure. Remember, all of these shapes will become part of your vocabulary once you've practiced them enough. Step nine. This time, we're adding something before the double trap. This is just a simple arpeggio with a chromatic approach tone from below. So if we're on E flat major seven, we would play E flat, G, B flat, D to arrive at the D where the double trap starts. But instead of playing the arpeggio from the root of the chord, we're replacing it with the chromatic tone below the third to approach it. And finally in step 10, we're gonna practice the entire Herbie Hancock line in all keys. If you practiced all of the previous steps regularly, you'll find that this line will fit your fingers like a glove and it'll be much easier to play. Hope that was helpful. All of our members will receive a PDF for today's lesson. If you're not a member yet, you can go ahead and become one by clicking on the join button or the link provided down below. And don't forget to check out our music theory journal where you have access to all of our previously published PDFs that you might have missed out on. YouTube thinks you're gonna like one of these two videos here, so make sure to stay around and watch some more. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next video.